What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf, and today's show is going to be packed, so stick around. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, of course, uh, China being off of our coastline of Alaska, and of course, uh, Elon saying that UFOs, uh, well, there are UFOs. We'll show you in just a second. Remember, nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else on the show, including our wonderful mods. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. All right. What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marf. Uh, if, uh, if all of you are having a great day, put a, uh, put a D in the chat. Just a D for day. Just a great day. Thank you. All right, uh, so if you're new here, we're going to start off by showing you that we are actually going to be backing up everything we say here with a source. All of those sources will be at marfuglenews.com. Now, it's very easy to navigate. Of course, just go to today's thumbnail. They kept their word. Uh, they were off the coast leaders in hiding. We're actually uh, talking about uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, who is not to be seen for some reason, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then, uh, of course, all of the links are there. Every single piece uh, of video, tweet, article, uh, document that we're going to show you here, we make sure you have access to. So then you know exactly where it's coming from. And then down below is web-only content. It is basically too hot for TV stuff. If it is going to get somebody knocked off of platforms, then it's probably there. And then over on the right side, there is, of course, all of our affiliates. If you do want to save on uh, many of these affiliates and help the channel at the same time, go over there. You can also do a PayPal live during the show and have it read out. Uh, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brothers slash uh, slash Dex James. What is going on, Dex, and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So, uh, again, a uh, lot, of, lot of stuff, so we'll just get right into it. Remember to get your notifications at marfuglenews.com. That's a main point. And Twitter, uh, when we tweet, that is physically when we are going live. <clears throat> All right, uh, Storm Nicholas knocks out power to over 400,000 customers in Texas. Uh, we've talked about Texas a lot lately because, of course, they had, since their winter storm that my actual brother-in-law got, uh, ended up getting stuck in the snow, kicked out by a hotel with no transportation. Legally, they couldn't keep him there. Uh, one of the Fugle fam members, one of my uh, viewers and Fugle fam uh, families, uh, went out and drove an hour and a half to pick him up. Uh, since that storm, there has been a lot of stuff that has happened with their grid and with their power because it was a you know a record-breaking uh, storm as far as you know how many people uh, versus how long it lasted and and how they were not able to fix it. Uh, not only that, it was they were so unprepared for it that a lot of the places their pipes broke. Everything happened. Uh, now, of course, we have called uh, you know called that and now. Uh, Tesla, uh, or not Tesla, I guess I guess it would be Tesla. Tesla's Elon Musk's company is actually going to be doing uh, backup batteries, these huge building size batteries for the Texas grid. Now we see that Storm Nicholas has knocked out power to over 400,000. It says Texas energy company Centerpoint Energy Inc. said that Tuesday about 400,000 homes and businesses in the Houston area uh, service area uh, were without power as Tropical Storm Nicholas drenched the city. That represents about 17% of Centerpoint's power customers in the Houston area. So one, about one-fifth of all of their customers were, were without power. <clears throat> It says that Nicholas was currently located about 30 miles south-southwest of Houston and could cause life-threatening flash floods across the Deep South during the next couple of days, according to the U.S. National Hurricanes Center. So they're, they're saying that this could uh, still cause flash floods that are, of course, uh, you know, worse than some of the uh, main events. Just like we said with Ida, less people perished in Ida than the uh, all of a sudden flash floods in New York. Uh, I believe eight or nine people ended up perishing in New York, and that was just from the flash floods. That wasn't from the you know hurricane style winds and Category Four and all that. That was just from flooding. So flooding is actually, a, it, I, I mean, it, as far as dangerous, 
I would say that it ranks higher than, you know, some things. <clears throat> Brenda Loritz, thank you, says, check out Universe 25, Mice Research About Society Decline. Interesting. I will check that out. That sounds like something we would show on the show. Uh, Peggy Bove, thank you for subscribing. SS, thank you for subscribing as well. Shay Watson, thank you for being one of the ones, uh, the last ones out last uh, show. And Stephen McMahon, same with you. So if you are in Houston and if you do get crazy footage of this, uh, of course, being safe, send it to us. You can always go to our website, marfuglenews.com. At the very top, there is a Play My Video tab. Once you click on that, it will give you instructions on how to submit your videos. And then DARPA wants cheap laser communications terminals to allow any satellite to talk to another. Dex, uh, so... Doesn't what did you think when you saw this? Because I have a thought of you know when I saw this, what I was thinking. What were you thinking? Well, yeah, I mean, technically speaking, it sounds like they're building a grid between all of these uh, satellites, and uh, obviously, I think they're all you know the frontline conversation is going to be like to help you know prevent collisions and things like that, and to be able to deal with you know debris and other things and 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 share data amongst those. So it's almost like building a you know a upper atmospheric you know, internet, right? For all of these uh, devices in the sky to communicate with one another. Uh, what I thought was that, of course, we have Starlink, which was getting put into place. And I said years ago with the, you know, information that was coming from Fugle family and people that I knew that Starlink was actually much more. It wasn't even at that point, it wasn't considered something uh, like a, that, like a conspiracy or anything. It was a matter of fact uh, kind of thing, saying that they were going to put this grid up, and that this grid was going to help with detection of objects anywhere from hypersonic missiles. This new stuff back then in 2017, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, Putin came out and said that they had hypersonics. Nobody believed him, and then all of a sudden, all of them had hypersonics. Then Starlink went into kind of play almost immediately after. Um, a lot of people ended up grabbing uh, Elon Musk also to consult for meteors uh, as far as a meteor hitting Earth and, and uh, defense, you know, meteor defense for the, the planet because, of course, he had SpaceX and he had all this other stuff. And, and then all of a sudden it just went quiet. It's like they forgot, you know, like like media stopped talking about Elon being a voice on meteor defense and all of that. Once Starlink was kind of announced and talked about they just stopped completely talking about meteor defense. That is why I have a lot of theories about meteors, and and of course, it it, it can almost get buried in some of the other stuff that is going on. Uh, some would say like you know, well, which one's going to happen? I don't know. I think I think it's very possible that all of this stuff could happen. No joke. I mean, like you know, I'm telling you guys what I think and what my personal opinions are. I'm a human. I make mistakes. Um, but I, honestly, I, I think that going with your gut on a lot of this stuff is it, it, it nine out of 10 times. It always ends up true. Look at the current situation with what is happening right now. Almost everyone with somewhat of a, a, a brain can see what's happening next. Uh, I mean, it's very clear. I mean, look at what China's doing. Look at what everything is happening all in order. And it's in little subtle steps. Uh, just today, we have news we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, Mark Milley, you know, this whole thing with China. I mean, it's just like, it's so predictable. It's insane. So as far as this, I, I thought that this was set up and possibly, per, you know, um, something that uh, in the event of some major downage, they would still be able to talk to each other. Or if something happened, uh, they could use a older, kind of more primitive way to communicate. Think about that. A cheap laser terminal that can handle multiple waveforms will dra drastically expand the resiliency and capabilities of space-based communications. So, lasers. Um, lasers, I wonder if, if this actual way could be protected against EMP and things like that. <clears throat> it's just a thought. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments below or put it in the chat. Uh, Gunpowder Productions says, La Palma has gotten worse today with more quakes. I've been watching, and uh, again, thank you for everybody that popped over to Dutch Sense with me last night after the show. In fact, a bunch of you just went straight from uh, my show to his, so that was awesome. And then uh, Delaware Sasquatch says, attended school meeting today. They stated National Guard is here in, uh, in Delaware training to drive buses and vans for school or something else, question mark. 
So I know that uh, we just covered that last night and there was, there was, uh, uh, but I didn't, I think I thought it was somewhere else. Dex, do you remember where the bus drivers were? Oh no, were? it was there. It was in, it was in, it was in Delaware or it was in also in Massachusetts. Okay. And okay. So we covered in Massachusetts and then in, uh, of course, Delaware, they're having these, uh, national guard being trained to, tr- uh, to drive buses. I don't know if it, it can anybody basically hop in a bus and drive it a school bus or is it kind of more like a big rig? Do you know Dex? I, and if anybody knows, put it in the well, chat. I, I think they have to go through some basic training. Like there's some security stuff that they need to deal with, with children and how to evacuate a bus and things like that. But um, I don't know that it requires, it may require in some States a commercial license, but I don't, I'm not really sure if it does. It's not that much different than driving a, uh, a large uh, RV, you know, a long RV, as opposed to a, <clears throat> a tractor trailer, which is totally different. So Des Therian says need a, a class. <clears throat> so, um, but is that only because of the kind of job? Because I mean, you don't need one to drive a, a huge, uh, uh, you know, a RV or something like that. Why, you know, why specifically is, does it have a, a, a manual kind of gear system? Are they mostly automatic now? Here's the thing. Somebody says, yeah, need a CDL. Oh, no, I totally understand that. So are they training them to get CDL so they can do it? Are they doing it for purely that? The What I said last night is like every single movie that shows kind of everything fall apart, any kind of martial law situation, any kind of, you know, catastrophe, they show school buses in almost every movie being used to, to you know, get people from point A to point B. There's thousands of them all around the country if we did need to evacuate and have used uh, school buses. So that was the one point. Uh, again, not to turn some one thing into another, uh, but, you know, why do they need so many bus drivers? Oh, well, they say it's a, a shortage. Uh, again, everything is short. So our National Guard's going to start working at McDonald's because there's nobody working there. Like, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I understand that that's a little bit different. So... This this project, again, is something that I think that we are going to follow. Is it something that's more primitive uh, that can run if there was an EMP? That's just a thought. And then robot vacuums are learning to avoid dog doo-doo, but that's not all they can see. There's more to this. It says the Roomba J7 Plus, the latest versions of the iRobot's popular home vacuum, claims to give customers, quote, even more control over their clean with a camera that can identify and avoid pet droppings... And instead of smearing it all over the floor, the device will uh, gracefully avoid the poop and even snap a picture and text it to your phone if you're out. It says the $849 vacuum released last week relies on an AI-boosted brain and a camera system to identify objects on the floor in real time. It's designed to be thoughtful, collaborative cleaning partner suited for people who want to teach, uh, teach to serve them better or want tech to serve them better. It says iRobot says in a new release uh, for the company that pioneered robot vacuums that it represents a significant upgrade. Uh, One thing about this is this is just one more product that a lot of people are now starting to get into. Uh, This is uh, among the Google Homes and and of course the Alexa, you know, all of this stuff, the Nest and all of that. And uh, smart toasters, smart refrigerators that now can text you when you're out of something at work. This is something serious. Uh, if you're if you're very low, if if your kid goes in and drinks uh, almost the last of the orange juice and there's this much left, there are now refrigerators that will take a picture of that orange juice and say, "Hey, you know, you're at work on your way home. Do you want to pick up some orange juice?" Uh, this is a real thing. Uh, and you might think, "Oh, that's only for super rich people." Well, kind of now. But it won't be because all of the tech is now uh, getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper at at the same time, you know, everything's going up, but uh, things are being integrated. So that that makes you think. So if everything is going sky high, but then things like this are getting affordable, why are they affordable? Why are these things becoming more uh, attainable by the regular person, by the person that is working minimum wage, by the person that is doing middle class? Well, I'll tell you because they want every single person to have these things in their home. This thing has an AI, uh, basically an AI service inside of it that's identifying things in your house. Dex, is that what you thought when you read this? 
Oh yeah, and and I've purchased uh, one of these in the past, and I had the option to buy one with a camera, not this exact one, and I chose not to. I chose to get like a much cheaper, dumber one because I didn't want that, you know, type of uh, camera just running around my house. And that was many versions ago. <clears throat> now they're talking about this one is going to the cloud. It's sending pictures. It's taking. It's a front-facing camera. It can see around. But of course, they say, oh, we're only trying to identify you know, uh, dog excrement and nothing else. Right. But th Why? there's no telling what's going to happen with that. Right. And by the way, that is a real problem. If you have one of these robots on a hard floor and, you know, runs over that, it makes a much, it makes one mess like a disaster in your house, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> and a disaster to clean up your robot too. smear uh, clear. It is. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> I, the marketing message on this is, is spot on, but, but the whole notion of like we were worried we've been worrying for the last few years about the microphones listening to us and then it's like okay well now we're worried about the cameras on the front door well now we got the cameras in the house and i know there's been other applications with cameras in the house but this is a pretty common one this is bought in big box stores everywhere a lot of people have them they're very convenient items and you know technically what they're doing is actually really good in the sense of you want it to clean your house and learn your house and know how to vacuum it better and things like that right all that stuff's cool but it comes with a cost and the cost is okay now there's another camera in or now there is a camera in your house that's connected to the cloud that you don't actually have control over what it's doing and it's trained and you purposely buy this thing and the best model uh i i looked at them before and i was like well you know we have too many rooms to to cover the amount of rooms it was like at back then it was eight hundred dollars now it's come down it was like nine hundred dollars or whatever it was if you have more than one room and we had all these different hallways and things. And I was like, this thing's never going to do that. Now you're training it to go into every room in your house. So it basically gets images of your entire house or this one would. So you train it. Now they've trained us to train these things to be a roaming, uh, now audio commanded, uh, video taking, picture taking device inside of our own homes. They can see the brand name stuff that you buy. They can see all sorts of stuff. And you don't think that this company is taking that information and, and uploading it? I, I'm sorry. I, I think all of them do. And again, that's because we found out all of them did. All these smart TVs that we bought, uh, not knowing that, of course, they were recording, but then again, they even got caught. They got caught. Uh, big ones like Sony. Uh, I want to say it was Sony, and I don't want to be wrong, but it may have been Sony or or um, uh, some of the other big ones. Um, they were recording, and they were feeding that information to advertisers. So if you say you know something, all of a sudden, that information would go, and then they have your profile on the internet. So you're saying something in your living room and it's not their predictive AI. It was them listening to you and then connecting that with your address, then connecting it to you, then connecting it to your online profile. Then when you're searching with your phone, like you think that this phone isn't connected directly to you, it is now showing you the weird and totally crazy weird thing you would never see an ad for is right there. So. Um, my my advice, and this is just my advice, is get one without a camera. Get one with radars or something if you do want to get one of these. Uh, but soon, I'm sure that that won't even be possible. All of them will have camera mapping systems that will map your entire home, which also means they'll know where you're at. And just one last thing is all of these devices, once uh, the fifth generation really starts, uh, you know, getting to the point where it's, you know, really, really pushed everywhere... Uh, it can detect things moving between all of the places where things are going. So even it, it can tell when something goes through, uh, you know, two devices are talking. In fact, they say that trees stop that fifth generation, right? So when you walk through, it can see, you know, how far, how, how long it took that signal to come back. It knows where you are soon. All of your devices talking will be able to triangulate you wherever you are. And we're talking about in and outside of your home, uh, especially once we get to Li-Fi. If you don't know what Li-Fi is, that's light emitting uh, Wi-Fi that's from LEDs. And it will be your light will be your Internet Wi-Fi source. And it will even be faster than Wi-Fi. This is something that's not, you know, some futuristic thing. It's coming. Uh, you know, think of Wi-Fi from your street lights and things like that. Wi-Fi from your mall, you know, bathroom lights and things like that. That will be your high-speed internet. At least that's uh, that's what they say. 
And then Elon Musk caused a stir again. We follow him because he's weird and he's eccentric and he's an elite and he's extremely connected. He's on committees. He is definitely a part of multiple government projects right now, including electrical grids, including uh, going to Mars, including uh, Starlink, which now we know for a fact, it, DOD and everybody else confirmed uh, that there are sensors for hypersonic objects, whether that be missiles or meteors. Uh, they are also connected with the Neuralink, with the government. They're doing experiments, probably some crazy stuff we don't know about. And then, of course, the Boring Company. Uh, the Boring Company doing underground tunnels for cities, therefore contracted with the cities. But also, uh, I guarantee, they are digging tunnels with the same equipment for bunkers and a network to get uh, you know people everywhere. I bet you we have now caught up to, you know, Russia publicly has these underground... Uh, you know, setups. They have underground paths. So does China now. I believe we're we probably have a whole network of things. Who knows? Maybe that's what all the mystery booms have been over the years: is them making this underground bunker network in case of a massive nuclear exchange. It doesn't. It wouldn't make sense to me that they wouldn't prepare for that kind of thing. Sean Glock, thank you so much. John Lambert, uh, Sean Glock, thank you for your support of the channel. We are independent. Uh, truly independent. We don't have a multi-channel network. We don't have multi-billion dollar company behind us. So we do appreciate everybody that supports. It says Elon Musk says that there's a UFOs uh, sparking Twitter frenzy as Congress to set up unit to probe mystery craft. Now these are two separate things, but what the tweet physically said is, and let me see if, if we have it. Yeah. It says, I'm not saying there are UFOs dot 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 but there are ufos now most people would say well that's you know if anybody else did this it wouldn't be a big deal but because elon musk who runs spacex who is currently in charge of all these programs him saying it is a whole different thing now this gets everybody in a tizzy it gets the ufo community all yeah, up in arms and and a lot of people are excited or you know mad because he's m making a joke out of it or something i've seen people angry i've seen people happy I've seen people making fun of him, saying he's an idiot. Uh, what do you think about this? I would honestly like to hear your opinion. What do you think about actual Elon Musk saying, I'm not saying there are UFOs, but there are UFOs. Is this a quote from a movie? He does that a lot. Um, you know, it, wh How do you take this coming from Elon's mouth? We have seen him do a lot of really weird predictive kind of programming kind of stuff. Uh, from the pictures he shares, from, you know, China screensavers that he's shared with uh, parachutes falling out of the sky like it was Red Dawn, uh, from him doing pictures that look like, of course, the Earth is being destroyed by a meteor back when this was all going on, uh, Dogecoin basically looking like, again, either a mass catastrophe blowing up and going over stuff, or um, or a meteor hitting and actually sending a cloud of, of smoke over the land. All sorts of predictive programming stuff that he has shared over the last uh, three years. It says three well, months... Let's, not, Go let's ahead. not forget, he has the probably the most amount of time in space with his company, his equipment, you know, his rockets, etc. So he probably has more footage of recent time uh, that we may not know what's on, and he may know, right? Exactly. He has... He has uh, the, the combined time, I believe, was... I, he may... I don't know. Uh, somebody would might want to look into this in the Fugelfam. Does he have more combined time, supposedly, in space than NASA has in years? Because NASA was pulling everything down. If you remember back when in Barack's days, Barack pulled the programs and said, you know, we're not... We don't need to be going to space. There's stuff here on Earth that we need to do. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely... Definitely um, a good question. Three months ago, the Pentagon shared a bombshell report that didn't rule out aliens existing. The long-awaited report was released in June and detailed what the government knows about a series of mysterious flying objects that had been observed in military airspaces over the last several decades, which again ended up being just a complete redacted, massive 
basically they didn't tell us anything. It says, now Musk has seemingly said he believed there could be visitors from another world. He tweeted, I'm not saying there are UFOs, but there are UFOs. This sparked uh, a huge response on Twitter with many asking if he knew more about the existence of aliens. It says, one said, with all the SpaceX flights you did, I'm pretty sure that you have tons of monitors into a dark room where you will keep watching the classified images your cameras get. And it says, but but the question is, does NASA monitor it as well? Release the secrets, Elon. Life is too short. It said earlier this year, Musk said that he uh, has not seen any evidence of aliens. There could be dead civilizations out in space. So is that another thing? Uh, there are some people with the theory that, of course, uh, we may have come from Mars. There's a whole uh, group of people that believe that there's a dead civilization on Mars and that we sent our last people before it went and got itself destroyed or the the uh, atmosphere just totally fell apart and sent here. And then ancient, you know, uh, ancestors basically rehabilitated the planet, got it going, and then all of that was destroyed in catastrophes that, you know, now there's no evidence of it or something. I don't know. Maybe the, wouldn't that be a trip if the dinosaurs or whatever that was here when humans came and, uh, or the humans were the ones that destroyed it. Like Chicks a Club was a spaceship crash or something. Uh, I know that that's not it, but you, you guys get, you get the drift. There's all sorts of theories out there. And he's saying dead civilizations from him saying that, um, I, w I just wonder what that means. You know, is, is he talking about Atlantis or, or something in uh, other planets? It says, but speaking on a discussion on the voice chatting app Clubhouse, he said that there are arguments that it is likely the consciousness might exist outside of Mars. But he was pretty sure he would know about it. He said, I have seen nothing to indicate there is any uh, alien civilization whatsoever. I'd be the first to jump on that in a second, but I've seen no such evidence. Now, as he's saying, and by the way, what, the way he says this, he goes, I'm not saying there are UFOs. So he's not saying there's UFOs as in aliens, but there are unidentified flying objects. So he could possibly be hinting that, hey, this is China and Russia. That's another way to look at it. Uh, Dex, do you have an opinion on that? None other than, you know, he's the one that he is of all the non uh, non governmental uh, employees or military DOD employees. He's the one that would know. Right. He's definitely one that would know if anything's out there. Would he tell us? I don't know. Yeah, no. All right. And then uh, thank you, everybody that's popped in. Tammy Chef Pleffer. Is that Shell Pfeffer? Shell Pfeffer? Shell Pfeffer? Shell Pfeffer? Shell Pfeffer? Shell Pfeffer? I can't say that. I, I wish you guys could see how this name is spelled. This is this is like, man, I am so... That's awesome. Sh Shell... Sh Schnell Plef Fleffer Fiffer. That's a real name. I know it. Elmerick Lemus Escalator and Painter. Thank you so much for your support of the show. Thank you for everybody that's popped in. Thank you, DLive. Thank you, everybody popping over on DLive. Pearl, Chicky R, Cloud Pharrell... <clears throat> M. Menching, Happy Camper, uh, Rose058, Play Keys just followed. Uh, we got Sleaze Bucket and Joe Texas just followed, Done4, and Mock the Freak 11 just followed over on DLive. Uh, with, oh, Gone Girl, hey, what's going on? Hey, Fugle Fam just woke up. Love y'all. This is a good one. Stay tuned because this is uh, getting, this is going to get crazy here in a second. Uh, I, Copperby just followed. So lots of new followers over there in, in a short amount of time. By the way, with uh, D Live as well, we have over five thousand people watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you uh, popping in. So, before we get to the mysterious unmanned vessel that was just spotted in San Diego Bay, I do want to remind you: uh, if you have not gone over and checked out these guys yet, then I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen anything from My Patriot Supply, basically they have uh, an all uh, one-stop shop for anything prep-related. If you want to get whole amounts of food prep as far as, you know, a month supply, three months supply, six months, a year supply, you can get that from these guys. Not only that, they have everything from uh, camping stoves to, uh, you know, of course, battery packs, all sorts of gadgets for survival, uh, survival kits, all sorts of stuff here. 
Uh, a good, another good way to use this is to get a gift for a family member that is totally asleep. Again, you can go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. And not only will you get a huge discount on uh, either a $50 discount off of the four weeks uh, supply, you get a $200 off on a three month supply. And on top of that, you'll be helping our channel. Every time you support one of our affiliates, they kick us a commission for bringing you to them. Uh, that way they end up uh, you know, earning you as a customer. Uh, we end up getting a commission from that that helps us grow and you get an awesome product at a, di a discounted price. So it helps all of us. I really appreciate every Fugle family member that understands the importance of supporting uh, the small channels and the things that you watch through these kind of things. Because if you're already going to do this, if you can, do it through either myself or somebody that you actually support. There are a lot of YouTube channels that do the same kind of thing. Uh, again, you know, support the channels you like right now because everybody needs it. We don't have backup. We don't have anybody behind us. We have you. Uh, again, that's marfuglenews.com slash prep. And again, you can get anything there from water filters, Alexa Pro, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. Alexa Pure, the air filter, awesome stuff. All right. And then Dex, this mysterious unmanned vessel was just spotted in San Diego Bay. This is a drone ship. Is that is that right, Dex? Yeah, it is. And and we're seeing more of these. And I, apparently they're going to be deployed soon too. So I'm I'm assuming this is either in test or maybe while it's in test, it's actually searching some stuff. Because, you know, we have recently had things off of our coast. And I wonder, you know, we're always probably patrolling what's going on under the water on our coast. And I have a sneaking suspicion that these are going to help in that uh, in that category as well. When you when you look at this, when you physically look at this, this is kind of freaky. This looks almost like a couple of overturned uh, canoes with you know solar rays, and then the top end looks like something you would see on say you know a destroyer or something. Uh, so it's not very complex. It's like a catamaran body, right? It's just a standard catamaran body, and, you know, outfitted with some stuff on top, and who knows what's underwater. I imagine they've got some underwater microphones and things listening and looking for stuff. I bet you that, well, that would be smart for looking for submarines. Uh, this is some high-tech gear. These uh, these antennas, if somebody's out there that knows exactly all of these, uh, feel free to put a comment on what all these are because I bet you somebody could look at this and actually tell you what these devices are. I mean, these look like, this. you know, some of these look like something that, you know, satellite uh antennas some the same kind of thing you would see at the top of an rv or something but down below this is some sort of uh turnable camera it looks like this looks like a speaker maybe to tell people hey back off this is government property uh this looks like a flashing beacon this looks like of course uh radio uh antennas and then you know a longer different frequency and then solar panels other than that this is kind of a simple setup but it's smart, and this is where everybody's going. Like I said, this could be out there waiting for somebody to come. We can't patrol all of our waters, but we, what we can do is we can put these drones with this technology and put a grid around our country and essentially have uh, you know eyes out in the sea. This also tells me that they, if, if they deploy a lot of these, that they're waiting for something to come our way. Uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. We, of course, had China off of our coastline. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the exact circumstances. Uh, not a surprise, uh, but not a great thing either. And then, uh, of course, Vladimir possibly hiding. Maybe they know something's about to kick off. We'll talk about that here in just a minute as well. Terry Y., Michelle Hill, thank you for following. And then, again, Tammy Shell Pfeffer, please email me how you say your name because I now I just genuinely want to know. All right. What do you think this is? Let us know. Uh, and, and basically, this sums up. You can read the rest of this article at marfuglenews.com. Uh, this sums up that there are a lot more unmanned vessels that are being released and actually in use right now off of our coastlines, above our heads, and even in our city streets. Amazon's Palm Reader launches at first non-Amazon venue in sneak peek of our biometric based future. There's no stopping this. And what's sad is if everybody actually stood up and said, hey, we don't want this kind of thing to happen, then it, would, it wouldn't happen. But of course, everybody is in this kind of boat that's like, oh, well, if nobody else is saying anything, I'm not gonna say anything. 
And of course, everybody has that same thought. When everybody is thinking in their head, I don't want to put my palm or my iris on something. I don't want I don't want that. Some might argue that, well, why not? If you're not doing anything wrong, then why would you care? Because this can be used in the future. The, the, the thing is, is people don't see what has happened in the past with things like this. As far as uh, when governments gain too much control and, and you end up turning into stock, you end up turning into uh, cattle, you end up turning into the resource. And that is why it's a very scary scenario when you start uh, tracking people down to the T that that also gives you a whole lot of control. So if somebody wanted to flip the switch and turn into an Adolf, not a good thing. That's why it's so important to fight against that stuff. Uh, as far as like your invasion and privacy and stuff, you want to have that privacy because guess what? If they do turn and they are bad guys all of a sudden, you don't want them to know everything you are doing, your patterns, where you're going and all of this. I don't understand how people don't see this. They're thinking about the current, you know, current situation, but you're not thinking of a future situation where there are Adolfs in charge, where there or are, right? They, you're not thinking of the future or the past. It says uh, Amazon's electronic palm reader technology known as Amazon One launched at the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Denver on Tuesday. According to a press release from the retailing giant, the first deployment of Amazon One's biometric reader outside of an Amazon-owned property is certainly a sign of things to come. <clears throat> It says, in fact, Amazon seems to be banking on rolling this technology out everywhere. I bet you they are. It says, Amazon One is already being used at Amazon's brick and mortar stores, as well as several Whole Foods, which Amazon also owns, where people who sign up for Amazon One provide a scan of their palm print. Once registered, those palm prints can be used to purchase items. We're not in the Twilight Zone. We're at an Amazon retail store. Here, they have a grocery store that just opened up, and it is called Amazon Fresh. And what it is, is you are now doing it with your phone, and it's essentially what they plan on doing with this system. You walk in, you grab your items, you do not check out. You grab your items, you scan them with your phone camera or whatever the barcode is with your phone camera and you put them in a bag and you walk out. You don't interact with a human being, which it's like they had this stuff planned way before uh, CV. It's kind of kind of funny that way, right? Uh, it seems more like we are being trained to do everything ourselves like drones. Uh, with Walmart, Fred Meyer, Target, all these places have now... Uh, went from, you know, having a couple. Do you remember when there was just a couple self-checkouts and most people were actually kind of annoyed because the things were slow scanning and like, I don't want to do this crap myself, especially when you have a whole cart and, you know, four kids to feed. Uh, shopping is not exactly the fun thing. And then shopping and then uh, checking out yourself is a pain in the ass. So why are they pushing towards this? Well, is it any more sanitary? Is it, is it going to protect us from each other? Well, actually, no, because we're using the same things, including the, the scanner things that a lot of people use. People are grabbing that thousands of times in a row. At, at first, Target was cleaning them in between every time, right? That made sense. But most places weren't doing that. Target even stopped doing that. So it's like, think about the point of that. Your people are losing their jobs. Their positions as a checker is now gone. Now they're getting paid less to just kind of wander around and clean the floor or something. Uh, and then, of course, they have a robot for that too. So then they're just kind of sitting around hoping people don't steal. They're just more cameras. They're, they're basically hired as a as a as uh, an actual person camera, just a stock. Because now they don't have robot stalkers. Basically, Target are now stalkers. The checkers are all getting moved into the self-checkouts. And they say this is because of the current event, but it's not any more sanitary. Have you thought about that? It's it's BS. They're, and, they're, and then on top of that, they are now telling us there's this huge shortage of money and ch uh, change. And then saying that, uh, you know, that's why we can't do, you know, cash only. At the Walmart uh, in uh, Seattle and in... in uh, um, 
uh, what do you call it, in Washington, all of them are like not doing cash. They have totally changed their store permanently to do big, you know, these two big cubes of self checkout. That means you go in and you end up, uh, you you end up doing the self checkout thing. And almost everybody, it stops up the line every time because most people are doing cash. Well, guess what? You can't do cash unless you go to the one woman who is also watching all of the self checkouts. So if anything happens, which it happens every ten seconds and they have to fix it or come over and do their code, anything happens, the same person that is the only person that's doing cash in all of the store, they'll have two huge things of 20 registers, all self-checkout, one person on one side does cash. You think that this is because we're having a cash shortage? We print money like it's nobody's tomorrow. And nobody, nobody thinks about this? Even the employees are like, oh yeah, well, they just want people digital. It's like they know it. What about um, with the the hand reader, the palm reader? Um, imagine when the the time comes, and I imagine it's just around the corner, where they have the ability to read more than just your palm print. They can read what's in your palm. In other words, you know, if you have something uh, in your body or don't have something in your body that was supposed to be given to you or not, and then that restricts you from being able to buy something. What are you saying is that if they can tell a pulse or some sort of uh, trigger from your palm or they can if read they, in it with some sort of technology and see if you yeah. did what you were supposed to do. Exactly. And I guarantee you, Amazon's the biggest cunt company in the world. I almost said cunt tree. <clears throat> sort of true. Uh, they are the biggest company in the world and they are going to be everywhere and they're going to be connected with all these places and they're going to end up getting this technology in, in everywhere. Uh, Gone Girl 777, thank you again. End times, thank you for popping in. Says, uh, much love, Adam and Dex. My company just uh, M dated the V, but also, also he is, see, fa it's fake. Okay, I didn't get that one. Uh, I couldn't read that one. It's too too little here. My foreman said it's fake. I don't care. Oh, my foreman said if it's fake, don't care. A lot of self-scanners running here. Gone Girl 5777. Yes, it, they're everywhere. It's insane. Uh, I felt like streaming tonight, band dancing. End times. I, I, I will try to stop by if I can afterwards. Princess uh, Heine Pants, thank you so much uh, for, for being there. And then Dirty Sunshine, thank you for following. Lots of new people over there on DLive. And mentioning uh, Joe Texas, uh, again, Monk, 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 and uh, Bonk Goes the Weasel. Vault 11, hey! Says, always glad to be here. May go live tonight, guys. Well, cool. I will try to check. I'll, well, if you're live afterwards, we can try to see if we can host you. And then, of course, um, what do you think about this? Let us know. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, do you? Would you do a palm print if it made your life so much easier? Uh, let's see. And then Woodward Costa Book. Of course, we all know who Costa is, but if you don't, uh, again... You don't really need to. Uh, it says, Worried T-Man could go rogue. Millie took secret action to protect nuclear weapons. Dex, this is probably one of the huger stories here tonight because this is giant. They are admitting that uh, I believe Millie did something that could be considered treason. Yeah, and there's actually two stories here. So we've got this story and we have the next story. And they're two. both about them. And they're both coming out of this book from Woodward. Uh, that's basically, you know, uh, whistleblowing on what uh, what Millie was up to. And these that doesn't sound good. And this is not like after the changeover. This was during the, you know, the administration's time. So at, at the very end of his administration, while he was still in charge, while he was the president, when they were all saying, oh, we're worried about him doing all this stuff because you guys all know what happened around that time, right? And at that current time, uh, everybody media was saying, well, we don't want him to just, you know, be, we think he's so mad about the results of this that we're going to, he's going to go and, and start a, a conflict, right? It says two days after the J6, 
Mm -hmm. on the U.S. President DT, top military advisor, Joint Chiefs Chairman, General Mark Milley, single-handedly took secret action to limit T-Man from potentially ordering a dangerous military strike or launching nuclear weapons. According to Peril, a new book by legendary journalist Bob Woodward and veteran Washington Post, uh, Robert Costa. Okay, I thought this, I actually, when I saw Costa, I thought it was the other, uh, is that, that's a different, that's not, uh, that's not a Costa. Okay, good. Okay, I don't know who the Robert Costa is. I know, of course, of legendary Bob Woodward. It says, uh, Woodward and Costa write that Millie, deeply shaken by the assault, uh, oh my God, I just, okay, so, okay, so, let me rephrase this, S wrote that Millie uh, was instructed to, <laughs> after the instructions, uh, <clears throat> and was certain that T-Man had gone into a serious mental decline in the aftermath of the E word, right? With T-Man all but manic, screaming at officials, <laughs> his own alternate reality about endless conspiracy oh yeah because that's what it is you never know what a president's trigger point is Millie told his senior staff according to the book so they thought he was going to nuke people it says no matter what you uh, what you are told you do the procedure you do the process and I'm part of that procedure Millie told the officers uh, yeah I bet and he went around the room looked at each officer in the eye and asked them to verbally confirm they understood. Okay, so I missed a part here. It says, it says, uh, in response, Millie took extraordinary action and called a secret meeting underneath his president's nose in his Pentagon office on January 8 to review the process for military action, including launching nuclear weapons. Speaking to senior military officials in charge of the National Military Command Center, the Pentagon's war room, Millie instructed them not to take orders from anyone unless he was involved. It says, no matter what you are told, you do the procedure, you do the process, and I'm part of the procedure. Millie told the officers, according to the book, he then went around the room, looked each officer in the eye. Okay, do you see this? Like, I can see the painting of this. He's walking around and saying, do you understand me? Do you understand me? Do you understand me? He's looking at them in the eye to see if they're going to snitch and asked them to verbally confirm they understood. Got it, Millie asked, according to the book. Yes, sir. Millie considered it an oath, the authors write. So, just if this is true. Now, again, we don't know if these guys' claims are true. But they have uh, an amount of uh, reputation behind them as well. And they are a respected journalist. And I mean old school, not, you know, the other Costa. Who knows, though? Are they lying? Is this part of something? And then, of course, U.S. top general secretly called China... Over fears, T-Man could spark a war. So here's where treason comes in. And it, very well, you could consider that last part. That's border. This sounds like it is. It says that September 14th, the U.S. top general secretly called his ch Chinese counterpart twice last year over the uh, co concerns, concerns then President DT could spark a conflict with China as his potential lo loss loomed and it was in the aftermath, the Washington Post reported on Tuesday. You know what else this tells me? Like, maybe, maybe they knew that T-Man knew China had a bigger part of stuff than pot, you know... Who knows? I don't know. It says that U.S. General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he's up there, called General Li Zhu Shang of the People's Lib Army on October 30th, 2020, four days before the... And again on January 8th, the same day, the same day that he took actions against uh, not launching this... Uh, the nuclear weapons. Dex, did you think that was funny timing? Like, almost like he talked to China and then went in and changed uh, procedure? 
Yeah, it's it's obvious that you know this was concerning, but you know we're seeing here this wasn't just January. This call happened in October, but it's not just the phone call. It's what was said before right? this. And then guess what he said? It says in the calls, Millie sought to assure Lee the United States was stable and not going to attack. And if there were to be an attack, he would alert his counterpart ahead of time, the report said. The report was based on Peril, the new book, of course, by journalists Bob Woodward and Robert Costa, which said that they relied on interviews with 200 sources, and it is due to be released next week. Milley's office declined to comment. Representatives from T-Man could not immediately be reached. Asked about the report by reporters traveling with President J.B. aboard Air Force One, White House spokesperson Carlene Jean-Pierre declined to comment. So this is getting out. Now that it's out, they are actually questioning. So this is not like they're just brushing it off. This is something that they're going to have to address. This is huge. That that sounds to me a whole light, a lot like the song of treason. What does it sound like to you? Let's get a, a vote in the chat. Uh, do you think that what he did w could could be considered treason? Uh, one for yes, two for no. Hey, Seeking Truth, we've got Bert, we've got Aunt Gertrude, Donna Honey, uh, Mark Webb, Rick H., sick of it, jo Jason Stites, uh, Mad Shad, Greifel, uh, Wiz Jen, The Great Scott, Kim Shannon, we've got Prepper, we've got uh, Hugh Wright, Robert Ellis, El Sheba, Tabby Cat, Casey. Wow. And by the way, if you are somebody who's pushing two, don't feel... I, I, I love that people can say two. Um, you know, don't go with everybody else. That is a whole lot of ones. That is incredible. Uh, just to pop up, it will pop up on the screen here. Everybody in chat, 5,400 5, in YouTube chat. Everybody is just boom, one, 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 one. And somebody, of course, did 69. Same guy that s smoked uh, uh, Mary Jane behind the, the farm in high school. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Susan Donahue, thank you for stopping by. It is always nice to see you. I hope to see you every night here, uh, whether you do that or not. Adam Dex and Mod Squad, many thanks and much love. We are hashtag Team, human team Humanity. Uh, well, I'm on that subject. I just want to say thank you for everybody that watches the next day. If you're watching this as a replay, I appreciate you. I cannot say uh, thank you enough to everybody that uh, by morning time, anywhere from 40 to 50,000 people watch this show after it airs. That's incredible. Thank you so much for uh, just being there and, and watching every show, watching me at work, wherever you're watching us. I appreciate you. Uh, Mark Howard, thank you. And then I'm Batman78 says, uh, what's up, Adam and Dex? Love watching you guys, keeping us all informed. Isn't that just incredible? So you saw, obviously, a lot of people agree. All right, and then speaking of crazy, uh, crazy stuff, please make sure to consider going over and checking these guys out. EMP Shield is the same company that is now contracted with agencies like DOD, DHS, outfitting different places around the country. But guess what? Uh, they're not doing it for, uh, you know, us. In fact, if the civilians and the, the regular people and average Joes want to protect themselves against an EMP or a possible solar flare, which is overdue, uh, you would need to go through a company like them to actually protect yourself. Uh, if you do not want to be stranded somewhere after an EMP hits, no matter what phase, it actually protects against all three phases, E1, E2, and E3, the different pulses that come through, you would need to go check these out. Uh, they make different devices for different things. You can actually protect yourself against, uh, of course, uh, the car version protects your car. Your house version protects your house. They have one for your solar system, one for your ham radio. They have one for your motorcycles. It doesn't matter what it is. They even have it for boats. So if you have something that you want to use after an EMP or a solar flare hit, which again, the solar flare is basically guaranteed or a CME that is a Carrington level event will happen. 
then I would highly recommend protecting yourself against it. Uh, if you don't want to be stuck somewhere across town when something goes down, this is the solution. Uh, again, it also protects your home if you get the, the home version or any uh, anything against lightning strikes. If the lightning does end up damaging anything or if it doesn't do its proper job, then no questions asked, they do a $25,000 insurance policy. That's, that's uh, insurance right there. 100% American made, veteran owned business. Thank you all for supporting. You not only get $50 off per device, but you also help our channel at the same time. And that $50 off per device is grandfathered in. We, and I believe maybe one or two other creators, uh, had that since the beginning. And of course, that stacks on top of any other uh, sale that they're currently running. All right, and again, that's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Make sure to go check it out. Uh, Dex. Getting into the Chinese warship sailing near Alaska's Aleutian Islands, uh, this is this is not a surprise. We we actually talked about how uh, we thought that what was it? It was actually a, a, an opinion piece that basically said if we're going up there, then we're probably going to let them come by through here, right? We're supposed to be cordial and and say, hey, well, you know, if you're doing the same thing, we're not going to bother you. Exactly. So these Chinese ships were off the coast of the Aleutian Islands and uh, there was some images. The one thing that really kind of bothers me is some of these images have now been removed. Uh, some of the images have disappeared. Uh, they are, There's very weird kind of fishy things going on around this. Uh, this was an image, I believe, taken from a Coast Guard ship and they were tailing these four uh, you know, big uh, Chinese ships. Uh, one being a missile cruiser, one being a destroyer. Or, I'm sorry, let me tell you the real ones. It says, U.S. Coast Guard recently released a set of pictures of the legend class cutter USCGC Berthaf shadowing a group of four Chinese warships sailing in America's exclusive economic zone near Alaska's Aleutian Islands back in August. Now, this was August 29th. Dex, do you remember if anything happened August 29th? Uh, oh, I remember their official mouthpiece put out an article, basically, uh, which a lot of people said that that was them just declaring uh, war. That article that was put out on this exact same day, the same day that this happened, was them telling their entire country that we are the reason from the official mouthpiece of the actual government that we are the reason behind CV that we attacked them with it. And on top of that, they uh, wrote a huge piece basically saying all of the changes that are happening right now, like them cutting movies out of the deal, uh, they're, they don't want any kind of Western influence. That includes UK, any of our allies. They don't want any of it. They don't want English being taught, which basically takes away the, the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands uh, of, of uh, people from around the world that were there as foreigners that takes away their reason to actually be there. After a while, their, you know, whatever visa they have will expire because they can't renew it. There's no more. They they bankrupted uh, huge uh, multi-million dollar companies in a matter of a, a week and a half because they said, We're, we don't want English taught here. We want all effeminate men banned on television. We want uh, no more than one hour a week of video games. You're allowed from 8 to 9 p.m. on a Friday night to play an hour, and you can't talk outside the country. They have told all of their multi-billion dollar companies, which made multiple, uh, just hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, I believe thousands, uh, get to a billionaire mark. <clears throat> Those billionaires cannot own Chinese land. Those billionaires now cannot, uh, they cannot uh, put their companies on the world stock exchange. They can only do it on the inter-system. What does it sound like to you that China is about to do? Dex, what do you think? Well, it seems clear uh, to me that these actions are, are very much confrontational, right? And and if we're, you know, we can look at it as showboating and we can certainly take that position. But at the end of the day, they're making a lot of rhetoric around it. Uh, we know their actions towards Taiwan. We know that we want to support uh, that country. 
uh, against them, at least for, as far as freedom and democracy go. And we need it for lots of other things in the world, not just, uh, you know, for the semiconductors and other things. So, you know, it, it, them showing up here doesn't make, doesn't uh, surprise me because we've been floating through their, what they claim is their territorial waters, even though we don't think it is theirs. And so for them to be here, but you know, there could be something else going on. It could be more of aligning their ships and getting ready, right? If something's about to go off and now is the time to put your, your boats in order, right? Uh, and somebody said that this is one of the worst places to navigate and that it's very complicated. I loved that comment on Twitter. And I said, that's exactly why they might be scouting this. They said it's a very uh, difficult place to navigate and do this kind of stuff. And my thought was, uh, oh, oh no, they said it would be a difficult place to invade. And I said, well, that's exactly why they would want to go out there and scout it out and see why. Um, they have not done too much stuff, in, in, at least in the last three years, as far as going into this zone. Now, this is the 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 U.S. exclusive economic zone. Technically, they, that's international waters. It's where they do their business, but it's not the U.S. It's like right outside the um, where if they go, it's like, hey, you're too close. Um, this is close. This is, you know, this is right there. Why are they doing it? That's my question. There's a lot of stuff going on at the same time that makes this so much more elevated than it should be. Um, well, and, and we also know that their their big big ally is Russia, right? And um, they support one another. And in this case, we know China has the Navy and Russia really doesn't. So being up in that part of the area is the east, basically the eastern seaboard <clears throat> of, uh, of Russia, right? Yep. So it could be also protection for Russia. Which we're going to get to here in a second. Vladimir is... There's something weird going on here. Uh, single now. Thank you for subscribing. EOD vet. Salute. Thank you for your service. I don't agree with what Millie did. However, treason can only be charged by a declared enemy of the USA. Mutiny is, mutiny is a more appropriate legal course. EOD, EOD vet. I actually really appreciate that. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means. So, well, thank you. If other people agree or disagree with that statement, put it in the comments below nicely. Pinocchio knows, says Quinn Michaels was kidnapped. I don't, um, I believe I think I know who that is. If that's uh, somebody that was on YouTube, um, I don't know though. Billy Leather says, watching live tonight, uh, usually watch the replay. Great show. How about the tanks heading west? Have EMP on my son's car and in my house. Love you guys, a.k.a. Granny Jaja. Granny Gaga. Um, the tanks heading west, that is... that. Well, the thing is, is that we can't confirm if that's a normal drill or if that's something else. Like I said, I pass that kind of stuff on because uh, my aunt's friend sent her the pictures from Spokane that basically said, hey, you know, I've never seen this. She said she's been by these tracks for ever and ever and ever. She's never seen uh, them use it for that. Now, I bet she doesn't just sit there and watch them, and I bet it's happened before. Uh, but that, you know, that was a lot. Said that it just went on forever and ever and ever. Uh, estimated thousands of tanks moving towards the west. So, you know, somebody else said, well, could weekend warriors, could that be for this training that was going on with, with National Guard? Very well could be, but I don't think that they give them that kind of, that number and that kind of gear for training. They might have a small, you know, smaller uh, training groups in certain cities, right? Because National Guard is kind of broken up into your sections and, and your battalions, right? Or I guess whatever you would call the National Guard version, right? So I don't think that they would do thousands of them and just plow them out there for National Guard training. Uh, that doesn't seem like it makes sense. Um, I don't know. It seems to me, from everything we've heard, that they are beefing up the West Coast. And they are beefing up Alaska. If you remember, we just moved some serious gear, some serious uh, missile defense and artillery up into the Aleutian Islands. Right where this is off of, they moved huge artillery and I still have not seen a single article saying that they have removed them Dex do you remember that when they they moved uh oh yeah I remember we moved lots of stuff up there 
have you seen anything that says uh, that they are no longer there? Uh, no, I have not. I have not either. All right. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll. As far as the tanks, yeah, it's concerning, but we don't, you know, you can't confirm if that's scary or not scary or not, you know. Uh, Philly Irish Last, thank you so much. I believe I missed you. Thank you so much for your support. Vic Santiago says, love you, Marf and Dex. Keep up the great work. The end is approaching fast, and this is the best place to keep informed. Vic, thank you. I really appreciate that. Shay Watson, uh, I, uh, again, thank you, everybody that has popped in. LJ and Gulo, I missed yesterday. Thank you again. I just can't say thank you enough. Everybody that supports the show, uh, you know, again, thank you. Uh, we have Jesse S. says, just an FYI, La Palma has had a lot of seismic activity. Is News Live says it could be Russia and we could have, and we have China near Alaska. Dutch sense warning it about it too. Uh, will send tsunami to East Coast. Many blessings. So uh, I saw Dutch sense, kind of the the thing that was going on there, La Palma. Um, I do believe a lot of people are are um, you know following that very closely. We're watching it. Um, I don't see anything for immediate kind of alarm. So, uh, but I but I will uh, be watching it very carefully. Uh, Quinn Michaels again. That thank you. And then uh, I Leah, I missed you. It says I don't like T Man but read John Bolton's book. He belittled T-Man for not giving the go-ahead for dropping more boom-booms. T-Man didn't want blood on his hands. He's not a killer. He's not a warmonger. I, Leah, I love that. And Aliyah is one of our mods. Uh, we have both uh, sides of the aisle represented in our mods and in our audience, and I hope that it stays that way. I hope that the people in the audience can act like they did 10 years ago, you know, when you'd say, oh, hey, I'm a D or I'm an R and that was it. Then you had fun and barbecued and continued your conversation. It's on purpose that you are so adamantly pissed off at the other side. You're so pissed off at the this side and you think they're all idiots and these are all, you know, racist. That's on purpose. Not all of them are this and not all of them are that. Tom McDonald actually put it really well. Susan Donahue, again, thank you. Elric, uh, Sean Glock, Dust A Dust, La Palma, seismic activity off the charts. An eruption could cause massive tsunami all the way to the East Coast. I I, I would say I would watch the, the West Coast right now, but that's my personal opinion. Uh, I get that. If that does happen, that would be horrific. And then uh, Brenda Luritz, Greg Bryson, and Stephen McMahon. Thank you, guys. It says Al Q re rebuilding for U.S. attacks in one to two years. Okay, so if they say one to two years, that very well means uh, it could be any time now. This is one of those under the radar kind of pieces of information that goes out, and then we look back and we go, "We had this information beforehand." Dex, this is this is the information that uh, tells me that. That I am, you know, I'm going to be watching over my shoulder like a hawk and having my head on a swivel. Yeah, and of course, it's coming from the organization that, you know, also had its hands in a lot of media. So it's interesting that this is under the radar right now. Yeah, the, the fact that this is not all over the front page of everything. This is the same agencies that are directly involved with everything else that is mainstream right there. This is going under the radar. This is a guarantee in my book. This is my book, of course, that we will have something happen, a massive event. This is set up. The defeat of the American-backed government in Afghanistan has increased the danger of the Al-Q-T group uh, will launch another attack on the U.S. very quickly, the Director of Defense Intelligence Agency said Tuesday said states very quickly the current assessment conservatively is one to two years conservatively for al q to build some capability to at least threaten the homeland the chaotic withdrawal of u.s and the allied troops from last month in the face of a lightning t-ban offensive reduced the ability of the military and intelligence agencies to monitor t 
Okay, first of all, in the face of a lightning T-ban offensive, they didn't have to do anything. Nobody fired a shot. They dropped their weapons and they bounced. They left with all their money. This was set up. Nobody fired a shot. And they're admitting that they weren't able to monitor. So does that that tells me they they weren't monitoring them. We don't know who all those people are that jumped on planes and came over here. It's the stupidest thing ever. We just were remember the numbers last night. We just told you they are bringing at least a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. Which ratio? They've done ratios. They've even given us official stats that like one in in uh, seven or something was somebody who was over the top. It was like one in one in four was was Al Q, and one in seven was over the top. Would give their life in a second for it. You're talking about taking other people's, you know, livelihoods for their cause. And if you do the math on that, we've got a ton that may have just come. I they have come over here. I mean, what were they thinking? Did do you did you guys did you think though? By the way, that a lot of the people that they brought over in the the, the planned people, the hundred thousand. Did you think that they all like had an administrative job for the U.S.? No. We're talking about people that came and said, hey, I don't want to be here. I don't, you know, I don't like that. And then they get this status or they had connections with U.S. employees. They're saying, hey, I'm going to give you $5,000. Get, can you get me into the U.S.? People are getting paid to get back into the U.S. And who knows? And they had tons of cash floating around over there, as we've seen. Tons. Uh, and if you didn't see last night's show, man, go back and watch the previous shows. Go to the website at least and go look at some of the articles because uh, the they found $18 million in the vice uh, pres' uh, office jammed into everything, stuffed into everything. He had so much cash. He had uh, 12 or no, I'm sorry. He had $6 million in cash stuffed in every cranny of his office. And then he had... Uh, 18 gold bars worth uh, 12 million dollars. So it was uh, it was about 18 million dollars. That is insanity. So get ready. This is a big warning for everyone. If you don't see what this is, and we'll go back to this, and I if you don't want me to say I told you so later, then agree with me and spread it out. Norm Macdonald dies. Influential comedian, former SNL weekend uh, anchor update. I didn't even know he was sick. That was kind of a shocker. So, <clears throat> Norm Macdonald, uh, I, yeah, actually very surprised by this. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like he was one of the people that I didn't like recently because of his political humor. But I used to think he was funny on original SNL. It says, Norm MacDonald, uh, whose laconic delivery of sharp and incisive observations made him SNL's uh, most influential and beloved cast members, died today after a nine-year private battle with cancer. He was 61. He was actually very private about it. He, I didn't hear anything about that. Um, nothing. I, I, I did not know he had cancer. And we've covered him in a couple of stories, like him, him uh, you know, a- appearing and talking and speaking on public issues. Said he was most proud of his comedy. Hoekstra said he never wanted the diagnosis to affect the way his audience or any of his loved ones saw him. That's why. So I, I do I do respect that. It says Norm was a pure comic. He once wrote, a joke could, should catch someone by surprise. It should never pander. He certainly never pandered. Norm will be uh, missed terribly. He used to come up with these like super just savage jokes. Um, so he basically he didn't <clears throat> he didn't tell people on purpose. He he didn't want people to think other ways about him, or they didn't want them to make him a martyr. They didn't want him. He didn't want people to pity him, and that's why they're fans. He wanted real fans for being real fans. I can I can respect that. Uh, TNF Fly Girl, uh, let's see here, says everything that is happening is biblical. We are no longer the leader of the free world. Keep your eyes 
uh, on Israel. It says, things are about to change very quickly. War is coming. Put your faith in Jesus and pray and prep. He is coming soon. Not only that, it says, we are not the leader of the free world. Uh, it, Anthony Blinken was questioned. When was that, Dex? I believe that was today. Anthony Blinken was questioned on uh, basically two times this week, our president has been cut off. The mic has been cut off while he's speaking. So he was asked, uh, Anthony Blinken was asked by somebody, actually right up, straight up, what what was it? Was it a congressman or was it a reporter? Do you remember? It's a House member, and I'm, I'm looking it up right now. I've got it on screen. It's... Uh... Rich, a house member, a house ranking house, member, house, house, member yeah. asked him who has who at the White House has authority to cut the mic on the president. Who who is who is uh, whose authority is actually telling him when to stop talking? That's a really good question. If you really think about that, because the fact that they are cutting off the president, does that give you any illusion that he is actually in charge? If they are putting him up there and he says, oh, I'm instructed to call on uh, this person. And then when he's still talking, they cut off his mic. That's yeah, a, I just found that's that a video bad look. And I, and I put it on our on our website so people can go watch the video. It the the video is on marfuglenews.com. Thank you, Dex. That's like I, Dex told me about that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. And they're even calling him out in public. I mean, like, this is just going very bad. And then Russia's Vladimir Putin is quarantined after several CV cases in his entourage. Okay, do you think that this is what is happening? It says Russian President Vlad is quarantining after several people in his inner circle tested for that. Right? And it says the Kremlin said on Tuesday. So if you kind of know that truth then you're like okay then what is really happening here it says kremlin spokesman dmitry peskov and putin tested negative for this uh, and is absolutely healthy peskov told journalists in a conference call that as several people in putin's entourage got sick with it the president must take a responsible position and not endanger the health of his colleagues the spokesman did not specify who had tested positive uh, and he said that he did not know where the individuals uh, had been veed Okay. And during a uh, televised uh, meeting, the government officials and members of the ruling United Russia Party, Putin said, several people in his innermost circle had contracted the virus, and of course, including one staff member whom he worked closely with on Monday. So what is he doing? Uh, it's They're saying that he is put away, that he's not to be seen right now. He's not publicly seen right now. If you think about everything that's going on right now, it's that's kind of that's uh kind of freaky here. Cause yeah, if, I, I question where is he hiding and why, right? They're giving us a public reason, but is he really in a bunker? Is he really you know where is he? Is something about to kick off? Uh, is is he under duress? Do you remember when T Man was supposedly uh you know doing the same thing and then he was seen on the the official video was weird quality and it looked like he was on a boat when he said he was at the the camp that was really really weird because no matter what the gimbal situation was uh there was no physical way with whatever lens combination uh gimbal combination tripod combination handheld there was no way that it would sway like it was on a boat so why would he say that he's hunting at camp david or whatever and then really be on some boat out in the middle of the ocean, possibly being protected. Why is this happening? This this could be used for leaders to go into hiding. Uh, with everything that's happening alongside with India and China backing up with, of course, uh, everything that China is doing, pulling everything out, shunning all of uh united states shunning all of the billionaire companies in fact i was just told uh so other stuff so any of the stuff that you're getting from china if you are into collectibles or something like that um toys collectibles things like that almost all the companies just disappeared overnight 
Something's going on. Something massive is going on right now. And it's happening right under our, our noses. So these these companies that make third-party figures and third-party transformers and things like this, uh, massive business, millions of dollars, they're all like disappearing. People that make uh, knockoffs of any product, so like a generic kind of, or if you want mats for your car, or if you want any of these things, there's companies disappearing left and right. Where are they going? People aren't going to see it until it's the last second. You guys already know. Everybody in the Fugle fam has been here for a long time, knows. It's it's just simple. It's looking at the patterns. It's looking at uh, what they're physically telling us uh, compared to where the world is actually being guided. And you can see what's happening next. Love new Fuglers. Y'all are going to love it here. Thank you. Uh, Gone Girl 777. Bling on Grammy says, Aw, oh, so stupidly executed. Reeks planned. Be safe. Bling and Grammy, yes. It, it most definitely does. Mr. Why Me Too just followed. Thank you, everybody that has followed. End times, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Princess, thank you. I appreciate that. Chicky R, thank you. 17-month substreak for Chicky R. Uh, that is huge. Chicky R, thank you, thank you, and thank you. That's a huge accomplishment. I don't, is there anybody that's above that? That might be how many months we've been on here. That means you've had a, a, a DLive subscription the entire time we've here, been here. Thank you. Uh, Dex, <clears throat> can you tell us about the, uh, of course, the web-only content? Yes, absolutely. So head over to marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show and scroll down past all the articles and information we just presented to you to find the rest of the story. It's called web only content, things that are too hot for TV or other content that we just can't share with you live right now. Uh, you're going to see some stuff like that video I just talked about uh, with the congressman drilling uh, Blinken about the, uh, the cutoff switch for our administration. There's also a, an interesting video there about um, what happened with a nurse. And uh, actually, I think there was multiple nurses there that were trying to uh, figure out what's going on with their jobs. So go take a look. You'll see what's going on. Plenty of content around some of the political stuff, but even a lot of the V stuff uh, that we don't talk about or get a, get a chance to talk too much about. So go check, take a look, marfuglenews.com and click on the thumbnail for the show. Scroll down to web-only content. By the way, Anthony uh, Blinken's response is, there is no such person. So you're saying once he starts saying dumb stuff at the very end of his speech and the mic gets cut off immediately, that person doesn't exist. Apparently you're in the I, twilight zone. I, I, I saw two videos myself. I saw it. And you can follow the, the Twitter thread and see it. Oh, there's more. Two videos where, there, and there's probably plenty more, but there's two straight up videos where the feed was cut immediately. Like, oh, I'm going to talk to you now, or I want to talk about this, and boom, cut the feed. Oh, yeah, and, and it's not like it's it's mistaken, like, I'll see you guys tomorrow, Somebody cut. Somebody pushes that button. I mean, we, even we know how that works. Like, somebody has the ability to push that button. Wait, Dex, can you, can you uh, just talk about today? What do you mean? Just say anything about today. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> See that? I just cut him off. I just muted him. <laughs> I'm the global elite now. <laughs> Sorry, Dex. I didn't mean to actually Very funny. Follow. Yeah, <laughs> you get it. But yeah, but somebody has that power, and 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 who's calling the shots? That's the big question. It's that's a very scary thing. Uh, on a non-scary note, Don B, thank you so much. Everybody that uh, went over to PayPal uh, in the last week, uh, we have Amy says, Jeremiah was a bullfrog sending love from Northeastern Maryland. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate your support. Uh, uh, Don B sent $20 uh, to PayPal. Thank you so much. Karen uh, W, thank you for the five. Uh, AmberTracks.com, thank you. Uh, again, Jeans Knee Horsley, thank you for the shorts. The info is much appreciated. Love from California, which should be next to shake. Uh, thank you again. Cheryl W, I appreciate you. Uh, Erica M, thank you again. Chicky R, 
Uh, again, Jesus is my safe place. Sending love from Northeastern Maryland. Chicky R, thank you for not only doing that, but again, we just heard Chicky R did a 17 month sub streak. I had an 11 month on uh, Crypto Batman and they the system messed up. So I, that was the longest I've seen. You, 17, that's crazy. Someone has to. Says, I'm known as someone has to online. Thank you so much. Says, uh, Adam, you and Dex are the hardest working duo and are appreciated more than you know. Uh, someone has to. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. You guys, things like this, that it, it's a huge deal. Um, we appreciate that. Of course, it doesn't take uh, the YouTube 30% out or whatever. So appreciate that. Uh, Bayberry's Antique Dolls. Craig L., I appreciate you as well. Craig L. did a, a 50 last week. That is really, 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 uh, really, really awesome. Thank you, Craig L. And Bayberry's Antique Dolls. Thank you, everybody that supports the show. Um, everybody, make sure to put an M in the chat for the mods. They have made it a peaceful place. Those mods, they are... Uh, amazingly talented all of them are people that I've known for three years they are all people that oh time and time again show that they uh, can deal with triggers and all sorts of things they are just an amazing group of people both on D live and on YouTube so make sure to say uh, do an M in the chat for them thank you everybody it is now time for the shout it's not an outro it's not a shout out it's a shout <laughs> If I can push a button. Just want to shout out Florida Patriot 71. Thank you so much for being an amazing person. I'm praying for you and I hope that you are as happy as you can be right now. Sandy Morgan, TM Fly Girl. Jesse S in the on the white world. I ain't single now, I put Nicky Nose. Bring it back down, everybody, Jiggy calls. Hot EOD vet in the belly leather. Oh, everybody really wanna be better. Sharon Cooper and the devil. Down Terry White. Terry White. I'm got trip up seven. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gun Girl Triple Seven, for being the number one supporter on D Live. Seven, gang, girl, a chip, gang, 
Everybody watches and they see it all burn to hands And I jam jam deck day and I go as right Girl, girl, a chip of seven Come, girl, a chip of Come, girl, a chip of seven Come, girl, a chip of Come, girl, a chip of seven Come, girl, a chip of Come, girl, a chip of seven Come, girl, a chip of Come, girl, a chip of seven Come, girl, a chip of Come girl, a chip of seven. Come girl, a chip of seven. 